Right, well, hello and welcome if you are joining us on YouTube. Uh, we are already in our chat room in Connect, and um, I'm being told that I'm not previewing well, but hopefully you are seeing it or you will be very soon. And uh, I will be getting going in about 30 seconds or so. Still, still seeing starting soon. Excellent. I'm being told it's all working, which is fantastic. So now everybody can see me and I get some slides up and then we're going to go into a demo. So first of all, hmm? Uh, I haven't in here, no, but I have everywhere else. Ah, it's going to be one of those nights. OK, I've got that going now. And I just need my slides and then we are good to go. So officially, hello and welcome, everybody. Tonight we are looking at Adobe Ideas. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Elaine Giles. I am a trainer for quite a while and um, currently present the MacBytes podcast every now and then. I am also the Adobe User Group Manager for the official Adobe User Group in the northwest of England known as NWAG, the Northwest Adobe Group. So if you are a member of NWAG, hello and welcome. And if not, check out the website. You'd be most welcome to join us. But back to Adobe Ideas. Uh, Adobe Ideas is quite a young product. It uh, originated for the iPad and it is still available for the iPad. It is no longer the uh, quite basic application that it started life as. They have added features to it and improved it greatly. So, for instance, one of the things that was much requested and has been added is a fill tool. So they're improving on this all, all the time. It is now also available for the iPhone. And I think it's safe to say that we all know someone who uses Adobe Ideas. And if that sounds strange, have a look at this. Back in 2010, um, there was an election rally at the University, the University of Washington in Seattle. And uh, the gentleman there in the grey T-shirt with the uh, Barack Obama T-shirt on asked President Obama to sign his iPad. And there's a video of that available on YouTube so you can actually see it. And now why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because that was the result. Uh, it might be a slightly different interface to the very latest version of Adobe Ideas, but that is Adobe Ideas. So uh, we all know at least one user of the app. The interface has slightly changed from them, which just shows you how much work they're putting into developing this application. Now, if you have used this on an Android, sad news, um, it was terminated. They terminated the development for the Android version back in December 2012. So if you are really keen on seeing an Android version, let them know, because they said they were open to... Um, Ah, OK. Need to sort that out. I will sort that out. Um, all right. So Android. Yes, they said that they were open minded as to whether um, they would bring it back. So if you are really keen on an Android version, then maybe you need to let them know. But without further ado, we are going straight into the demo and actually having a look at Adobe Ideas. And I need to do one thing before I do that. And uh, hopefully I'll get the nod that that's OK as well. So I've done that one thing. So Mike will let me know. And let's have a look at Adobe Ideas. So here is my iPad and I have Adobe Ideas on here. Now, one thing to think about first, all these touch applications that you have from Adobe and Creative Cloud on your desktop, all synchronized together using an Adobe account. So on my iPad, I have already logged into my Adobe account. I will be showing it on my iPhone shortly and on there I haven't. I'm going to try and sync it live. I know, crazy. So I'm going to tap on there and go into Adobe Ideas. And this is where you manage your files. You can create new files from in here. You can also open files, rename files, all of the kind of things you would expect that you can do with files. Now the folders that you see there are my demo files. And I don't see a way to create a folder very easily in here, if at all. So I created these folders on my desktop and everything synchronized between Adobe Ideas and back to my desktop. So I'll be showing you that as well. But the folders that I have on there, they're not just folders that contain Adobe Ideas files. They contain all the files that I have synchronizing via the Creative Cloud account. 
Now, if you're sitting there thinking, oh no, I, I don't want a subscription. I just want software that works on my desktop and I don't want to be paying a monthly fee. You can get a free Adobe um, ID. So you don't have to pay for that. It will give you synchronization options and you don't have that ongoing price of the subscription. So you can still take advantage of all of this, even if you don't have a full Creative Cloud subscription. So I've got one Adobe Ideas file there called Tools, and I have those four folders. Within the folders, the first one has some Adobe Ideas files in it. So as I go in there, you can see I've got lots of files in there that are Adobe Ideas. The rest of these folders, they may have one or two in there, One's got nested folders in, but as you can see, there isn't in that folder. So you actually get the message that this doesn't contain any Adobe Ideas files. So in keeping with the ethos of an iPad, if a file is not an Adobe Ideas file, then you just don't see it. So if you think of how Dropbox works, you can have lots of information in Dropbox, but you only see the files that are relevant to the application that you're looking at Dropbox through, and that's how it works. So I do have files in that folder. If I look on my desktop, I definitely would. So let's have a look at that. Now go back up a level to the very top and show you up here, this is Creative Cloud on my desktop. And I have 20 gig of space, but I've used very little of that. And I have it synchronizing to my machine locally. So I'm going to open that folder there. It's opened it on the other screen, but there it is. And there are the files that I have. So I have one Adobe Ideas file. And the folder that I drilled down into was, let me have a look, was it that one there? It was, it was the date one, so this one, I'll double click on there. And there are the files that I have in there and the folders. I drilled down into the one called Plain. So I'm going down into Plain and there are files in there, but you're not seeing them because they're just JPEGs. So it is synchronized. You have access to all the folders. So if I did want to put a drawing in here, I could do, but I'm not being bothered by files that I can't open. So just something to be aware of there. So that's the same uh, folder showing on my iPad. So I'm going back up there and I'm going to create a new file. But first, let's have a look at what we've actually got in here. If you're looking at Adobe Ideas on your machine, you may think, what are those little white ticks? So next to each folder, there's a white tick. That only appears when you're logged into your Adobe ID and you are synchronizing via Creative Cloud. So if you don't see those, it could be that you've, you've not logged in, you've not got an ID, or you're not actually synchronizing it. At the bottom, you have the option to create a new file. And on the right of that, you can elect to load in an image. So if you wanted to start from an image, maybe that you've taken with the camera, you can do that as well. Up in the top right, you have some management options up here. The first one of those is your Creative Cloud files. And you can see I have synchronization turned on. I also have it only synchronizing when Wi-Fi is enabled. It's telling me the synchronization is complete and I also know I'm only using 2% of my storage. So that's your creative cloud management in the top right. Then you have another option there. When you tap that option, it allows you to duplicate a file. So if you've started working on something and you want to carry on but have a point in time backup, then that's a really good way to do it. So all you need to do is select the file that puts a tick in the middle of it and elect to duplicate it with that option at the bottom. And it then has in the top left hand corner of the iPad a copy of the file and that grey bar that's along it there. So just to show you that grey bar, that's showing you that it's actually synchronizing back right now. Once it's synchronized, there'll be a tick next to it. But at the moment, it's writing it back to Creative Cloud. Obviously, I'm doing an awful lot on this machine at, at the moment. I'm uh, broadcasting via two systems and getting it to upload. And I've got stuff on the Wi-Fi, so it's taking some time. It probably wouldn't take your files as long as that seems to be taking. It could also be Creative Cloud, but we will move on. You can also, from here, manage your files in terms of deleting them. So same option. All you need to do is to tap on there 
and then choose the files that you want to delete. And once you've done that, so I'm going to choose that file, you can either cancel that or choose to delete it. So standard file management there, I'm going to cancel and leave that alone. And the only other option that you have available in here is the cog in the very top right. So going into there, it tells you what's new. So I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it, but uh, you now have support for um, more styli or styluses, depending on how you want to pronounce that, uh, including pressure sensitive ones, which I don't have. I've got a standard stylus. Uh, Obviously, if you're using a finger, that's not going to be relevant, but uh, you've got these options in here. So as I've said, they are really working on this and keeping it up to date. One of the things that's important based on what we looked at last month, and everyone seemed really keen on that, was cooler. You can now create colour themes from artwork and sync them to cooler. So uh, if you missed that last month, you'll find the video of that on YouTube. Down at the bottom, you have my account and you have preferences. Now, my account will take you into the account page. From there, if you weren't signed in, this is where you would sign in. Obviously, I've signed in, saved some time there. And again, it gives you what storage you've got. And back again to the last option, which was the preferences. And uh, something pretty important in there that you really need to get right before you start and could be important if you are left handed, which is you can change the position of the toolbar. So by default, the toolbar is on the left hand side, but you can flip that in the preferences over to the right hand side. Uh, not quite so important, really more of a preference, just a personal preference, is the stroke smoothing. You can have these strokes that you create smoothed either while you're drawing um, or after you finish drawing. So at the moment, it's set to while drawing. The other option on there is the product improvement program. And I must admit, I have opted out of that. I don't need any more data passing through here than absolutely necessary. So at the moment, I have opted out of that. And that's really all you've got in the way of preferences. But the top one, certainly very important if you find that you are, would much prefer to work the other way with the tools on the right hand side. So that's what we've got in terms of the management here. Let's go in and actually have a look at what we've got in Adobe Ideas. So I'm going down to the bottom of that screen and I'm hitting the plus on the left hand side. And that's going to create me a completely new Adobe Ideas file. And what you're looking at now is the canvas area of that file. Now it looks as though it covers the whole of that area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the third tool down on the left hand side, which is the hand tool. And what I'm going to do there is uh, zoom and zoom in a bit. And once I zoom in a bit, you can see that there is actually a border on that. So you can see um, it is finite. So I, well, I can zoom in on it, so I'm pinching outwards, doing an outwards pinch there. And as I pinch inwards, not much to see as I'm doing it, but I am pinching inwards, it brings it back down to the size that it actually is. So I'm going to leave that there so you can actually picture that there is a border on that. And I'm going to go back to the tools at the top that I've got. Now, the tools that you have here are in four groups on the left hand side. At the top, there are the drawing tools. So as I tap on there, five options come out. Now, that will disappear. See that? I did not touch that. It does that automatically. So I'm going to have to keep tapping that to bring it out. The first option there is the pencil tool. So as I click on there, I've activated the pencil tool. And you access the other tools by bringing it out and just clicking on them. The tools you've got in there are the pencil tool, the brush tool, the highlighter tool, the pen tool and the fill tool. And the colours that you have underneath are the colours that were last used with each of those tools. So I've got the highlighter selected. And if we look down at the bottom, I have the settings for that particular tool. So on the left hand side, I've got it set to a specific size. I have a specific opacity and I have a specific colour as well. And all of those can be changed. But just to show you what happens is I'm going to draw on there now. And that's what happens when you draw with that tool. It's a highlighter tool. If I had some text on it, that would cover the text or any part of the image that I wanted to highlight. But because the opacity 
is set. So I'm clicking on that opacity and you can see it's set to 70%. Whatever I draw over, you'll be able to see it to a certain degree. Now, if that, if that highlights it a little bit too much, you can go in there and you can slide that opacity right up and down. So you can take it up, you wouldn't see anything behind it then, or right down to something else as well. So maybe 50% would be better for that. So all I did to do that was tap on the opacity, a little fly out, flies out, and then I use my finger to scroll it up and down. You can change the colour of the highlighter, so if you particularly wanted a more lurid highlighter, you could do that. I'm going to leave that until later. And the other thing is you can change the size of it. Now to change the size of it, I'm going to tap once on that size box there, the little circle, and I can then scale it up and down. Now you don't even need to use the slider to do that. You can actually use the pinch outward, which is what I'm doing now. I'm hovering over that circle and I'm actually using the pinch in and the pinch out options there. So you can use that as well. And all of the tools work in exactly the same way. So I'm going back and choosing the pencil tool. And if I bring those tools back, you can see the highlight has still got the yellow under it. Everything else has different colours and I've now got the pencil tool and they are slightly different. So I'm going to leave everything set the way it is and just start squiggling with that one. And you can see it is different. It's much wider because the size is bigger, but it's smoother as well. The, the highlighter is more chiselled than that. And I have got exactly the same options. So clicking, uh, tapping on the size lets me change the size of the pencil so you can get it much finer. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's all very well, but now I can barely see it. Well, of course, with this hand tool, you can zoom in. And as you keep zooming in, you can zoom in really closely. You'll see it's still very, very sharp, very, very sharp indeed, because it's a vector tool. Everything that you create in here, you could bring back to the desktop and amend in Illustrator. It's a vector tool set. So you can zoom in as close as you need to and then carry on doing some work. So if I go back to the pencil and start colouring that in there, you can really work very, very tightly with it. And some of the stuff that people are making with Adobe Ideas is absolutely amazing. Sadly, my drawing skills aren't brilliant, but I'm showing you what the tools can do. And I will show you some of the fantastic artwork that is out there made purely in Ideas. Again, you have opacity settings, so initially set to 100, but you can take that down and uh, go back to the pencil and you see what happens. You are seeing the background through because you've changed the opacity there. And you can change the color. So while we've got this pencil tool, let's have a look at what we've got with the colors. Doesn't look like you've many options. You have black and white at the top. So it's showing you down in the color well, the before color and the after color. And that's useful because if you change your mind and you didn't have that bluey steel color saved anywhere, you could actually click on it, so tap on it, and it would reset it to that. So if I choose that one, it cuts it in half. If I want to keep that red one, that's absolutely fine. It will carry on, it will do it in red. But if I don't, I can flick back by just tapping the lower right left-hand corner of that. And I have the five colours that are available. But I also have the eyedropper tool at the bottom. And with the eyedropper tool, I can move over my artwork and as I click, it will select a colour for me. That's really useful when you're working with pixel based images. So we'll have a look at that again when we look at pixel based images. But also in the colours here, there is a fly out at the bottom. So if you tap that, you can then be much more precise with your images and your colours. For a start, you can choose RGB or HSB, or you can even look at themes. So you can add collections of colors to this as well. So we'll keep it simple with RGB. And all you've got to do with this is slide the sliders until you find the color that you are looking for. And this was what I was saying about making a color 
and it not being saved in this colour theme on the left of that. So I've got this colour, that's the colour I want. I don't want the opacity lowered, I want it right up to 100. Make the brush a bit bigger and make one of my infamous squiggles. There we are. I don't have that colour saved. So if I go back in here and think I want to change that maybe to green, I've now lost the settings I had for the pinkish colour. But by just tapping in that lower left hand corner, I can set it back to that pink and then I've not lost it. Obviously, the best thing to do is to save colours and work with themes. But we'll be looking at that as we move through. And as I say, you've got these other ways to work. Now, when it comes to the themes, this is the active theme, the one with the eyedropper underneath it on the left hand side of the screen. So over here, I shall draw the mouse around there, that bit there. These are other themes that you have available here and you can choose to delete those if you like as well. So you can add themes, you can delete themes. I've got two here that are very similar. So I have this theme and I've got quite a few. They all look the same, don't they? Good grief. I've no idea where they've come from. They could have come from cooler. But what I'm going to do is show you that you can drag that. So touch and drag it down to the dustbin and it will delete it for you. So this one is a copy of my current theme. So get rid of that and it moves all the others up. If I want to add a new theme, tap the add button and it goes away to the artwork and randomly picks some colours for you, five of them. Now that looks very similar to Cooler. So if you were with us for Cooler, doesn't that look similar to everything we did with Cooler? And it's even randomised it. I've only got the one pink colour, which is the top one, but it's randomised it so it's created two other um, pink colours based on that original colour. So has anybody tried doing this? Has anybody worked with these colour themes before? Have you saved them? Have you synchronised them? I think it's a really good way to work. And if I bring in a pixel based layer, and I'll be talking about layers in a moment, then I can use this to generate a colour palette in much the same way as Cooler works. So really adapted that from Cooler. So I'm going to tap save there. And now I have that colour set there. Now I've got it, but to get to it, I have to open up the expansion triangle there. Now, how these work, if you just tap in the middle of that, you can pick it up. If you drag it over to there and drop it, you replace those colours with that colour, with the, all the settings from there. You can then fold that down and that is then your active palette. You always have black and white at the top, but you also have the active palette that you have selected. No one's telling me whether they're using it like this. No one's telling me if they've got themes. You're a naughty lot, you know. Right, I, sh I shall plough on regardless. Let's have a look at the other things we've got. One of my favourite tools is the brush tool because I like the, um, the, the kind of effect that you get with it. As you start drawing with that, it gives you a very calligraphic effect. So that works very nicely. Obviously, it's going to depend on your artwork, but uh, it gives you a nice flow to it. It really... Um, gives you very soft edges. Now, I like to pretend with this, if I, if I wanted to do vector work, I might be tempted to work with Illustrator, but I can't quite get that kind of smoothness with Illustrator. It's very tactile because you're using your finger or you're using a stylus and you're really drawing on it. So I don't think anything can beat that. I really like that. And now I'm showing you how to use the hand to move across into a blank space. So yes, I can zoom in and out, but I can also move across to a blank space and start working in a different place. So what I find is I'm constantly switching between the drawing tools at the top, those five at the top, and that hand tool to move around. So back up here, and we've got two more left. We've got uh, this tool here, which is the pen tool. And you can see that's also very calligraphic. So um, it's as if you're working with um, a fountain pen style look. Anybody remember those from school? I know I certainly do. And then you've got the fill tool. Now the fill tool, to make the fill tool work, I'm going to have to have an area for it to fill. So draw something like that. So draw a shape like that, which is enclosed. I do have the middle of that enclosed. So going back to the fill tool and the fill color is set to that uh, sort of orangey yellow. I'm going to tap in there just once and it fills that for you. Now, if it doesn't work, so if I tap in here, I just get a sort of splat on the screen and then it disappears. It's because that the, what I've got there isn't enclosed, so it doesn't know where to finish the fill. 
So always make sure if you do see that splat, your problem probably is that you don't have an area like that that is enclosed. So if I go back to that fill and just tap once in the middle, I don't see the splat, it actually fills it. Right, you're now telling me that you do use themes, but not all the time. I guess it really depends on whether you're working with a client and you have a set range of colours to work from, or if you want to revisit the colours that you've got. Otherwise, you probably just do it on an ad hoc basis, but very handy. It's handy anyway. Now, the next tool is the eraser tool, and that's on its own in between the drawing tools and the hand tool. And that does exactly as you would expect. As I draw over there, it's erasing it and it has exactly the same options as the other tools. So I can change the size of that. And if I wanted to take something out like that, I would make that much bigger and then draw around it and lose it. So uh, you can use that artistically too. If you have a shape, maybe like this uh, square shape and you would like to take out a bit in the middle, you can use it like that. So although I filled that, I've now taken out a bit in the middle as well. So not just for getting rid of things that you've done wrong. So going now onto the hand tool. We've seen the hand tool. We know that that zooms in and out to the artboard that you have there. And it also allows you to move the artboard as well. So once you're zoomed in, you can use it to move the artboard so you can start working on another area. But that hand tool is hiding another tool. And if I tap on there, I get this tool, which has got the cross on it. And that is the transform tool. And what you can do with that is actually move elements on the artboard. So initially you might think, mm, don't they do the same? No, the hand tool moves the artboard, whereas the transform tool actually moves the artwork. So you can actually take half of it off the artboard. So very different in concept there. So that's the first thing the transform tool does. It allows you to move the artwork on the canvas. So if you've started drawing and then you've zoomed out and thought mm, it's a bit skewed to the left, you can move the artwork. But the second thing that it can do is very different from the hand tool. With the hand tool, when I pinched in and out, it zoomed me in and out. In here, when I pinch outwards, it makes the artwork bigger. And when I pinch inwards, it makes the artwork smaller. So very different, but you may think I'm making, I'm using the same uh, gesture, so it should do the same thing. But no, they're two very different tools. And although the gesture is the same, the result is very, very different. So if you want to scale the artwork, it's the transform tool you want. If you want to zoom in and out of the artboard, it's the hand tool you want. So you can see they're very, very different indeed. Now, we've been working so far on one single layer there. And Gary's saying that you can also rotate the content. You can indeed. So we've been working on one layer there. Now, your layers are available from the layers fly out there. And this, if you've used a previous version, is really growing in stature in terms of what you can do with it. Um, originally, it was just you can add a layer. Now we've got proper tools along the top. So the first thing you can do is add an extra layer. And the reason that you would want to add a separate drawing layer is to keep elements of your image separate from each other. So if you're not sure about a bit, you just want to make some changes and then maybe turn it on and off, have a look at it. Great way to work. So if you've used Photoshop or Pixelmator, Illustrator, anything like that, you'll instantly know what layers are and how useful they are. You can also in here change the opacity of a layer. So the difference with that is you could do some artwork and then turn it into a watermark for the rest of the artwork just by changing the opacity of the layer. The difference with that and changing the opacity of the tool is that it affects everything that's on that individual layer. So we've looked at the first button, which adds a layer. The second button should look familiar. We've seen that somewhere before. We saw that in the file management options, and that is the icon for duplicate. So with this layer with the drawings on selected, if I tap on that one, it duplicates that layer. So now I have two copies of that layer. And with one of them selected, which is this one, the next icon lets you flip and you can flip horizontal or you can flip vertical. So let's do that. And you can see we've now got a mirror image of that. I did mention I wasn't particularly great at drawing, didn't I? Mm. But the principles are sound. Now, the next option that you have, the fourth one here, which is a line and the downward arrow. So just to uh, highlight that, it's that one there. 
that merges layers so again if you've if you've used photoshop you will know about merging layers it takes the contents of two or more layers and merges them down so what i'm going to do with that is i will merge it down so i'm making sure i've got top one selected and merge down yes confirm that yes again confirm and it does it layer by layer i now am back to one single layer but it was created by duplicating a layer and then merging it back so might need to be careful with that make sure that that's what you want to do but you can do that you can also delete layers so if i add another layer in once i've got that a layer in there i can choose to delete that and again cancel or confirm and i will i'll delete it and you see how all of those buttons work at the top there now i'm just going to add in a couple more blank layers anybody know off the top of their heads how many layers you can have there's a question for you um, it's a practical limit really more to do with the interface i think than than the fact they couldn't give you more they can give you more oh mike's saying 22 you're being ambitious no a little bit lower than 22 any other guesses other than 22 now what i'm going to do while i'm waiting for you three you know more than three because i've already got four ah uh, you should have thought of that <laughs> oh good one right 10 10 is spot on you can have 10 vector layers so 10 drawing layers but you can also have one pixel based layer so at the bottom where there is a camera that's telling you that you can add in a pixel based layer and it's just one pixel based layer that you can add in now you also have um the icons here known as a burger if you've never heard it referred to as that it's the three line icon and what that allows you to do is to move the layers so you can reorder layers by just tapping and dragging and that reorders the layers not really obvious what that does but once you've seen it in one application it becomes clear what it does with all the other applications so that one reorders now the select photo option i'm going to tap on there and you can choose where you get that photo from that you're going to bring into your artwork. So Creative Cloud, your photo library, that's referring to the individual device. The camera from Google or from Flickr. Now, I, I could be very, very brave here and go for the camera, couldn't I? What I'm going to do is uh, take the case off my iPad and I'll go for the camera. Tap that and move my iPad. There's my desk. There you go. So uh, very dark. I do train in the dark, aren't I strange? But uh, I'll move it over here and put a light on. And there's my mouse and my iPad. And uh, tap on there. So I've taken that image. It has taken the image. I can then choose to use that photo or retake it. I'll use that. So just tapped on there. Turn the light off and it brings it in and puts it behind all of my artwork. It's looking even worse now, isn't it? But what I'm going to do, go into my layers and show you that one of the other things that you can do with these layers is actually toggle off the visibility. So toggling them on and off. So if I toggle off the one with all the drawings on, you can see there is an image of my desk. Now, why on earth would you want to do that with an image? And uh, the reason is that you could actually use that for tracing purposes. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I go into my image and I'm going to make sure that I have got the pencil tool. Not great in pink, but I'll go with it. And I'm going to zoom in. So first of all, I need the hand tool to zoom in and let's draw around my mouse. So uh, get it just about right for drawing around the mouse. And go and get the pencil tool. And literally you can just do that and you can zoom in and out to get it to the right level for you to work with whatever it is you're doing. And uh, I could try the apple, couldn't I? This is going to end up ve looking very dodgy because uh, not only is it at an angle. Oh, there you go. Near enough, near enough. And this is when you start toggling backwards and forwards. So I'm going down like that and then I'll go and get the different color. So choosing that and let's go for a lighter pink. There we go. And you literally just draw around whatever it is. So uh, I'm not best and I'm not taking any great care with this. But if it was a kind of cartoon thing that you were drawing or a building or something like that, it's a really good way to get started and then fill in the details later. So literally just drawing around there. And there you go. And of course, that is on its own vector layer. 
and you can turn that on and off. So if you want to see what it looked like before and after, you can not only turn off the drawing layer, the layer that I've just drawn on, you can also turn off the photo layer to see how you're doing in terms of turning that photograph into some vector artwork. And um, I'm thinking not too well, but you can just about make out that it's a mouse, can't you? Tell me that you can. <laughs> OK, so there is the photo layer back on there. Now, at this point, I've been working on this and have I saved it? Well, it's saving in the background, but it's not actually named at the moment other than Untitled 11. So if I tap on there, this is how you can rename it. It's one of the places that you can rename it. Uh, the other way that you can rename it is back in the file manager. But at the moment, I shall rename it in here and I shall put in there mouse and done to accept that name change. OK. Now, once I've got that image, I could go back into my file manager so you can see it's saving that back. And there is the mouse over there in the top left. You can see my tools copy still hasn't synchronized. That's not looking good at all. But the mouse is there for me to work with. So I'm going to go back into it and just show you a few more view options that you have, which is, first of all, you can take this full screen so I can do that. And that lets me view all of the artwork. I can still work in it in this view. My undo buttons and my redo buttons are in the very top left. They're very faint, but they are there. And to come out of that full screen view, I tap in the top right and that takes me out of it. If you would like to have the maximum work area, but not go into the full screen view, then down in the lower right hand, the lower left hand corner rather over here. So down there. You can tap on that and the tools will vanish. Now, how you bring them back is that very tiny black bar. And all you need to do is put your finger on the bezel on the outside and drag in and the tools then reappear. So exactly the same way, flick them out and flick the tools back in. The other options that you have up here, you can turn on your pressure sensitive stylus if you have one. Uh, which I don't, so I'm leaving that turned off, but that's where you turn that on. Do be careful with that. If you turn that on, this, this one is really odd. If you turn that on and you don't have Bluetooth enabled, you won't be able to turn it off until you go and turn the Bluetooth on and then come back in and turn it off in here. So don't turn it on unless you've actually got a pressure sensitive stylus. And the other option is to share. So you can send your ideas file as either an email attachment or you can send it to another application. So first of all, email, pretty obvious. What it will do is it will put in your dot ideas file in an email, allow you to address it and send it off to whoever. Share is more interesting. So I'm tapping on share. That would allow you to add it to a message, send it to Twitter. You could save it as an image. So that's an option. You could copy it, print it. And the most important one, open in. Now, this is something that I use when I'm demonstrating. So one of the really useful things that I've seen done with Adobe Ideas was Mike took it into work and um, he was using it as a virtual whiteboard. So had the iPad on his desk, it was attached to a projector. And as he's explaining concepts, drawing out concepts, writing notes on there, the audience can see it. They've got full screen on the projector. They can see everything that's going on. But the next feature for something like that is what makes it really powerful. Rather than having an audience sitting there scribbling down what you're doing, you choose that open in option. You can get that image to your audience for them to keep without having to do any printing or anything like that. Now, the options that you will actually get in here will very much depend on what applications you have installed. And obviously, I have quite a few applications installed on here, as you can see. So I'm scrolling across looking for the right one. And the right one that I use that works really well, I have done this in OneDrive, which is the uh, SkyDrive as was. I've done it in um, Dropbox. But oh, in CloudDrop, which is a client for the Cloudly service, it works brilliantly. So what I'm doing is I'm sending my image over here to Cloudly and uh, the Cloud app. And what will happen is hopefully it should appear. I can tell you in rehearsals, which is what you're looking at there. It was instant and now it's not. Where have you gone? Uh, come on, come on. Let me refresh that and see uh, if it appears. There it, it has appeared. It's there. It's upside down. 
that's a new one but it's there okay it's there uh, what I will do I'll share this other one so that one actually looks like um, uh, the right file so all I've got to do with that is open it in this app that's it what that has done is obviously it's still on my iPad but what it's done in the background is it has uploaded it so in the background it's uploaded it to the cloud app service now why that is important I'm going to show you if I run my cloud app and I go in here so up in the top right of my screen you can see there I've got some pictures there was um, the Mac user article that I shared at last month's meeting 28 days ago and there was some testing that I did so that's the one I've just shared this is the one that's actually a cloud file and what I'm going to do on there is right click and copy the link and now I'm going to go over into the chat and if Mike could put that somewhere so the YouTubers can see it uh, if I share that link with you and you can download that file so it's a great way in education to use it to demonstrate things and get that demonstration straight out to your students so virtually instantly uh, I think that app that cloud app uh, cloud drop was about 69 pence 149 something like that but it is amazing it is, is really is a very very good application and a very good use for it so coming out of there and going back into Adobe ideas there is my file and if we go back to in here have you uploaded yet you're thinking about it aren't you well I don't know how the next bit's going to work but if Mike gives me my iPod touch what I intended to do was show you logging in to another device live and getting it to synchronize with uh, Creative Cloud well there's nothing like ambition is there so that's what I will attempt to do so I've got my iPhone and I'm going to airplay it to this machine and mirror the screen so you can see it there it is and I'm going to go into Adobe Ideas and that is what Adobe Ideas looks like on the phone. The reason there's nothing there, that's what it'll look like for you if you've never used it before. Because it's not synchronized up with Creative Cloud and nor have I created anything in it. So what I'm going to do there is go in and attempt to link it to my account. So oh, it's saying I am signed in. Oh, come on, come on it's not showing you the files so uh, I did definitely want that to synchronize I was expecting to have to put my password in but it seems to have done it automatically it was on the clipboard oh are you going to work for me maybe not well while it thinks about it I will show you by adding in a new file that you have exactly the same interface um, even though it's on the phone even though it's very narrow you have exactly the same interface you've got exactly the same tool options so bringing those out the same five tools you've got the hand tool and the transform tool so bringing those out you've also got erase and undo redo and the size opacity and color you have the same access to the layers so you can add a photo layer probably more important with an iPhone than an iPad don't want to be caught taking a photo with your iPad do you and you can add in the same 10 layers to this and you've got the same options for saving it out to email and sharing now it's not looking as though that's synchronized for me is it so I'm attempting to go back here no I've just got untitled three well obviously Creative Cloud's having a moment on itself I'm afraid back there you go to stop jumping around on me but it would synchronize if all was working well has anybody else got problems with creative cloud tonight it's not working well for me at all in the synchronization department but everything else has worked okay so we can't say fairer than that can we now i did say on the desktop you have access to all of this on the desktop so what i'm going to do is lose my ipad and my iphone and go in to here open up the folder again there's the folder that we were working on it may or may not have synchronized back depending on what mood it's in but in here uh, I have files in here and just to show you that you can take these files and uh, edit them are you going to open it up in illustrator for me yep straight away as soon as you double click on a file it will open it up in illustrator so illustrator on the desktop you'll notice that the idea file icon is brown and the illustrator icons are brown so they are indicating that it is a vector it is vector artwork and what you get in here with it is now the ability to edit these really granularly so you have right down to the individual points on that shape so you can make grand sweeping 
uh, shapes with your finger or your, your stylus. But if you want more detailed control, bring the thing into Illustrator and then edit it point by point. So you also have everything in there is on the layer, but each element is separate. So if you look at that path there, so I am selecting that. You can see that is the fill over here. And if I want to see what it looks like without it, I can toggle it off. So even though everything was all on one layer in the individual um, ideas file, once you get it into Illustrator, you can finesse the uh, diagram, you can finesse your artwork really, really detailed by toggling things on and off and editing the individual points. Now I'm seeing a question. And the question is, can you take an Illustrator file and take it back to ideas? I'd love to say yes, but sadly, no, not yet. It is a one way transfer, I'm afraid, from Adobe Ideas into uh, Illustrator. So one way at the moment, but who knows in the future? Because you can do that with Photoshop and Photoshop Touch. So it'd be nice to think that they are working on that. And as I've said, it is one of the applications that did survive from uh, all of the touch apps that they used to have and is still being actively developed. So I would expect things to carry on in, the, in that way. You can also see here that the artwork that I've opened has brought in the swatches files that were with it. So those are the five colours that I had set as the theme for that particular artwork. Although this also has black in it and that did not get added in there, but it did bring in the other colours that were set as its theme. So you can then carry on working with that. So if you wanted to use uh, different shapes in here, so let's get the uh, pencil tool in here. Let's get a colour for it and carry on working with it. You can do that using exactly the same colours. And from within here, when you've made changes to that, just save it and you are good to go. So that's going from Illustrator on your iPad and taking it right through to the desktop, uh, Adobe Ideas on your iPad rather, and right through to Illustrator. Another question. Can you open this in anything but Illustrator? That's a really good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, right, you could, if you had Illustrator, open it up into Illustrator and save it out, but uh, I'm not sure if you could take that and open it in something like Sketch. That would be uh, something for me to investigate. Has anybody else tried doing that? It's not actually... Um, an EPS file or something like that that you could work with in that way. If you have Illustrator to act as the, the go-between, then I'd say yes, probably. But at the moment, I'm thinking probably not. So those are the files that I have on my iPad that you've seen. That's the file that I've been working on in here. I would then save that back. But remember, the changes that I've made in Illustrator do not go back with it. OK. So I'm going to go into my slides and uh, then we'll wrap up and have a chat. So back into here. And a uh, quick wrap up. You can get this application. It is free of charge from the uh, App Store. So uh, up to iTunes and uh, off there to find that. Originally, it was a paid for application. I'm pretty sure I paid for it, you know. Uh, there were also in-app purchases and uh, I do believe they are no longer there. The whole app is free. It also works on an iPad and an iPhone. So that was added to that. So head off to the App Store to find it. Don't forget that uh, you can get a free Adobe Creative Cloud account and it does give you access to all of the Creative Suite software for 30 days. But more importantly, in terms of synchronizing the apps on your iOS devices, it gives you the ability to synchronize your desktop, your iPad, your iPhone, and anything else you need to synchronize your settings with, as well as everything else that you need to do with it. So I would say get that free account, even if all you're doing with it is backing up the contents of your iPad to your desktop. It's worth it for that. And you have two gig free with that. So um, there is a link for that. It is creative.adobe.com slash join slash starter. If you already have an account with Adobe, then you should already have all of those features. You might not even be aware of it. So check that out. Just to reiterate that uh, going from Adobe Ideas, which is vector based, up into Illustrator, which is also vector based, is a one way trip, I'm afraid. You take it from Illustrator up, uh, you take it from Adobe Ideas, I will get that right, you know, won't I? From Adobe Ideas up to Illustrator, but not the other way yet. If that changes, I will be sure to let everybody know that would be a real good improvement.
Another place for you to visit is the uh, forums for support with it. Very active forums, lots of people chatting about it there. That's the URL. I will put that in the chat as well. And again, you'll find that the people from Adobe who are working on these applications do frequent these forums. So it's a great way to get across your point to them, particularly if that point is you've got an Android and you want it back on Android. So uh, check out the forums. And there is also a Facebook page. And again, this is actually quite busy. So uh, if you just search Facebook for Adobe Ideas, you'll get taken to that uh, page there and you can chat with other people and see artwork that they're using. There's also lots of tips and tricks that uh, you'll find from there as well. Now, I've said I'm not particularly great at drawing, but I know a lot of people who are. And if you check out Behance, you'll find lots of artwork from artists far more impressive than I am. And we have one of them with us tonight, don't we, Flo, who's got that beautiful yellow haired girl there. I particularly like the David Bowie one as well on the left. thought that was a very good piece of artwork. And uh, the other one there of this, the windsurfer, I think that is. And uh, they were done all in Adobe Ideas, which I think is pretty amazing. I need more practice if I'm going to create stuff like that. Uh, but uh, if you are an artist, you're going to love Adobe Ideas. It's very impressive. Now, where are we going from here? Well, future for Adobe Ideas. Adobe have already previewed two hardware devices and both of them leverage the Adobe Ideas platform. They are cloud connected design tools and they're designed specifically for tablets. They're known as Mighty and Napoleon. Mighty is an intelligent stylus. Now, I've not had my hands on one of these, but I have heard from people who have who says it feels really nice. It's a very nice stylus. It's not got that bulky tip on it. It's much narrower than that. So it should be give you more detail to work with. But the intelligent side of it is that the actual device will be connected to your creative cloud account. So your settings will go with you even if you're working on a different device, which I think is amazing. So really can't wait to see that. Napoleon is the ruler and that's uh, used for drafting. So uh, that's on the left of that there. So both of them provide a really personalized experience because they sync the settings between devices and applications. And as you can see from that promo image there, those two devices are being featured on top of a version of Adobe Ideas. So um, Adobe Ideas is really important for Adobe because of these two devices. So I would hasten to say it's not going anywhere anytime soon, unless, of course, you're on Android and then it already has. But who knows? They may bring it back. Keep telling them to bring it back. And next month we are back. We are back on the 18th of uh, no, the 17th of April when we are looking at Photoshop text magic. So all of the things that you can do with text in Photoshop. And then in May, we are looking at uh, working with video in Photoshop. And I heard last month from a lot of you who were saying you had no idea you could work with video in Photoshop. You can and it's pretty amazing. So uh, don't miss that one. And then in June, we're looking at Photoshop brushes. So 19th of June and uh, creating brushes, managing brushes, sharing brushes. And uh, we'll probably have some brushes for you to take away as well. So don't miss that one. So just to remind you, I have been Elaine Giles and you can find me all over the Internet as Elaine Giles. Check out my blog at elainegiles.co.uk. Also, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, YouTube. You get the idea. I am all over the place. Uh, my blog's also got some uh, videos for Adobe products. So uh, do check that out. And uh, that is it for the moment. I will be back again next month and I will also be putting some tutorials up on YouTube. So if uh, I don't see you before then, you will be able to find me on YouTube with my tutorials. Until then, goodbye and see you next time.